I welcome you on the behalf of New York Textile Month this year, um, and I also welcome for the third time Martina Dietrich and Deborah Rappaport. It's great to have you here, and you have, are, have a great contribution to our program this year with your three workshops. Uh, my name is Ragna Froda, and I'm the director of New York Textile Month this year. And um, as you probably most of you know, it's um, New York Texta Month is initiated by Lee Edelkort, the famous trend forecaster who is able to deliver beautiful forecasts and presentations to us about the future trends and, um, and um, colors for fabrics and fashion and many other things, beautiful things. And she is also a curator of design exhibitions and we have now one beautiful one in Lille called Labor of Love. She did that exhibition in collaboration with Philip Femano. But uh, Litvai is the dean of um, uh, MFA Textiles at Parsons and uh, she started New York Textile Month five years ago to celebrate textiles and uh, put focus on textiles. So we continue to do that this year. Um, we thought in the beginning that um, we were not able to do it because of COVID, but we brought everything virtually mostly. And uh, so that has been our format this year and it actually has been very successful. And um, we've been able to offer workshops and walk through through exhibitions, uh, talks and textile TV. And we've been exposed to textiles in many different ways, which is really great. And uh, most of the recordings you can find on a YouTube channel called New York Textile Month. And so is the same for the workshop of Deborah and uh, Martina. And Deborah and Martina, they are going to give a workshop on mending and repairing, right? Yes. This today. And they are really experts, I would say, in uh, anything that has to do with recycling with uh, upcycling, with mending and repairing and, and transform things and make them new again. Not only can they do that, but it, it turns out beautifully and the results are beautiful, fashionable, trendy, futuristic, modern, eccentric, and that's how they are the two. I just want to mention a few things because we still have a week to go for Textile Month and we have a lot of interesting events coming up. First, first of all, I want to mention that um, the MFA graduates are exhibiting their work at MANA Contemporary in New Jersey this weekend. This weekend and next weekend, we will also have a film of their work for those who cannot make it to New Jersey. But it's actually an amazing place, uh, MANA Contemporary and the space they exhibit in. It's really worth it to go and see beautiful textiles in an amazing space so it is going to be open from 12 to 6 in person this weekend and you can get more information on our website um, we also have a few workshops this weekend uh, loop of the loom has one on the earth dice there is one tomorrow with uh, mia wright ross and uh, dan stoyle in in collaboration with Mad Museum. Uh, we have a textile animation tomorrow online with Courtney Puckett and Nicole Antepi. Uh, I will be interviewing the Icelandic artist Shoplifter tomorrow on her art. She's a New York based artist from Iceland and we will talk about her work. She's exhibiting now currently in uh, Kurturhuset in Stockholm. Um, and yeah, just please go and visit our website. Liz Collins has one more textile talk next Tuesday. Uh, Tamara Morgendorf has an open studio in Brooklyn. Um, yeah, there's a very interesting talk with uh, Mari Mekko on Saturday called Behind the Prints. So yeah, please, we have the Instagram, Facebook, the website, but I'm not going to take more of their time and welcome Deborah and Martina, and I look forward to see your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, wait a second. Oh, we have to. Okay, here we go. Yes. Welcome, everybody. Happy and, to be um, back. <laughs> yes, for the third part. Um, and um, Deborah, you want to introduce yourself for a little bit quick? Um, I'm Deborah Rappaport. I'm a native New Yorker. 
uh, born and grew up right down here on the Lower East Side, left for 11 years and went to Berkeley, California to go to graduate school to study textiles. And uh, after 11 years, I had to come back to New York and that was 41 years ago. So been, been doing my ABCs, as I say, I call it a, assembling, building and constructing, working with found materials and recycled materials to create new works, whether for the wall or for the body, and still doing it. Yes, and uh, my name is Martina Dietrich, and I'm a fashion designer, maker, and creator. Means like for me, every piece is a one-off piece. Um, I studied fashion design in Germany for five years, and then I started working in Italy. Um, stayed in Italy kind of like 10 years, um, and then a little bit in New York, back to Germany, and now here in New York. Um, so the most important for me is really making the one of a kind piece and not doing mass production to focus on the one offs, um, just the main factor I'm working on it. So, um, so Deborah, what do you think about the sustainability is important? I mean, the planet's in trouble. What else do we have to do but to start being more respectful and doing things that are sustainable, you know, repurposing, recycling, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, whether it's objects in the house, uh, you know, like our grandparents used to do during the war, during the depression. So, and we don't have to think of it as being poor or even though I say frugality is fun, but think of it as a creative act plus we're saving the planet. So it is important. It's the most important thing there is right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so we think that fashion need definitely a change. And during this time, we already see that lots of things are changing through the fact that you have the you have still have the, the virus going on, the COVID. And um, so it's really important to change and change the mass production in a way as the food also changed into um, organic. So this is kind of a way to say organic with the food is for the fashion being sustainable. And this means also food shopping local, go to the farmer's market and get the food there organic. And so the same with the fashion it means kind of like, you know, go local. There are so many designers, you know, speaking from New York, many designers in your area, you can go talk to them, create with them, collaborate with them and make this change to like slow fashion and not always mass production and quick, quick, quick and more quick and more quick. So, um, so what do you think the most important, Deborah, is um, right now in this kind of like pause time? Well, we're on pause. So, well, the first thing that comes to mind, a puppy dog pause, but I don't have a puppy dog, but I think having a puppy dog, um, it's like a meditation, it really calms us. But I also think mending as a meditation. And I think anything you can do at home to do repairs, whether it's gluing a chair together, whether it's making a pot of soup, mending a pair of socks, which we're gonna talk about later, or any of that, it quiets the mind. And I think that's the most important thing right now while we're on pause is to get quiet. There's so much anxiety and fear out there on so many levels that we have to find our own inner peace and mending can do it. Yes, and this is like the first step to redesign and rethink about the whole situation that we are finding new things, which is actually old things we, we got taught from our grandmothers, um, which is kind of like a thing I got from my grandma, how to mend the socks. There was like evenings that we were sitting with grandma and she had the wooden egg to, um, to darn, darn, is darn. darn. Mm -hmm. and we were sitting there and we had to mend our socks because there was no question that we can escape in this moment. So we had to learn this. And um, so very important, this old kind of like necessary techniques. Yeah. But now these days they're forgotten. No one is, is using them anymore because the socks you buy, you wear it and you throw oh. it out. 
Um, when, thing, when grandma made you do it, did you find it meditative or did you think it was a chore? I, and, but I once loved you, you it. Love, once you I loved it. it. You know, in the beginning it was kind of like, oh, oh my gosh, gosh, I have to sit there and do this and you know. So I wasn't this happy in the moment, but then when I understood and I yeah. saw the result yeah. that the beautiful socks she already made and I could fix it, I was happy, happy, happy girl. And uh, more things she showed me by always stitching my hand and my mother, she showed me a lot of things. And not only for um, fabrics, also for food, you know, like making the own jam, go and um, make the own salad, go in the backyard and get the fruits and the vegetables, whatever you want to eat right now and make the dish what you have what do you, what you want to eat now you know so these are all the process of um you know sustainable living and mm -hmm. lifestyle and it's not just for fashion it's um essential it's yeah. totally essential to go into this sustainable lifestyle and what is essential food clothing safety yes. friendship Yes. You know, relationships, these are the essentials, not how many cars can I own or how many uh, summer houses I can maintain. And, you know, people more and more are selling those second houses because they want the freedom. Freedom is what's valuable. Exactly. Without all this heaviness of stuff you have stuff. to yeah. carry, you have to take care about. And um, you're just all the time more and more and more at the end of the day. You are busy with dealing with all this, yeah, with the stuff Different like cars stuff. and whatever. Uh, and then it as is. you get older, it's really a burden because your kids don't want it. If you have kids, and what are you going to do with it? True. You know, you have to start giving True. it away. I have a friend. Every other day, she goes to the basement and she has fifteen more boxes of stuff she's finally getting rid of. I mean, we we tend to be collectors as artists and as creative people. We like stuff. We like materials to work with, but it gets to be a burden. Yes, but then also, you know, if you collect the things and you make something out of it and make it to a new life, yeah. then, you know, it's a nice way to have um, a long lasting new piece, right. which you can give then as it is new to someone else and, you know, pass it on to friends or family members, whatever you want to do with it. Um, should we talk a little bit about the dictionary? Yeah. So we created this dictionary, which you can download on my website, easy, and then stitch it together. We showed it already. And then we, we just have this little dictionary as a reminder. And so um, we want to say, Okay. About the uh, dictionary. dictionary. And, if you, and if you fold it properly and then cut it, then all on one piece of paper, it becomes six pages. So dictionary of more with less. It's a way to recreate uniqueness. And we do it with? With more. With more. You want oh, to do the more? I want to do oh. the more. Yeah, sure. Um, more with mending. More with um, meditating more of definitely labor of love this is the basic where we start with everything and then we put things together so um combine to matching um merging and um create recreate everything in a new way together and then how to do it Deborah. and how to do it as we've been doing over the last two weeks you can do with uh, twisting things like taking old tights or pieces of fabric, braiding them together like our grandmothers did with the braided rugs. We can embroider with large stitches. We're going to show you some of that later. How to only repair but also embellish. Uh, knotting things together like with traditional macrame and other ways of, of knotting. Stitching of any sort, stitching, joining pieces together so you could take scraps of fabric like I showed last week with the cuffs putting fabric together and piecing it. That's also like old fashioned quilts and doing repairs, you know, fixing moth holes, fixing socks, fixing straw hats. And we're going to talk about that. And so the goals. the goals, what are the goals? The goals, of course, is the labor of love as meditation, because it's just um, a happy part when you put things together and then something new um, comes out. It's kind of like a, you put the seed into the ground and a new flower is coming out and you 
don't actually know when you put the seed in what kind of color is coming out. So this is the exciting part to um, put it together and recreate and create actually something new. Um, and then also to create long lasting pieces. It's not just for um, one time you wear it and then you make the picture and you give it away or throw it out, which is the worst you can do. Um, and so, of course, also when you create make just one piece, you don't need the thousands of the same pieces and be individual and also have less waste, zero waste and reinvent um, the way of making fashion. It's called creativity. Yeah, because you can wear it in so many ways, wear it with different embellishments, yes. mix it and combine it with other things. Just do your ABCs, yes. assemble, yeah. build and construct. And we all know that fast fashion is gone or going. And so we have to shop consciously and then go home and mend and make that your meditation. So that's all in the little book that you can download on Martina Dietrich's um, website. website. Yes. yes, and so today we start with uh, showing what we are wearing. So first I'm gonna show what I'm wearing today. It's a dress which is reversible. You see, you can wear it on the dark side or this blue side. And then I have to see where, oh yeah, it's, I show you the whole length and then I just put on a piece of denim which I can you see it embroidered with um, some pearls around and I, glass beads glass beads to show the the pieces and so you can do whatever you know form you want to do flowers stripes anything I was just uh, re using a pair of old jeans and put it together the way I have it and it's like in the back this is the waistband open it up and so I made just this little piece on top and then uh, here the necklaces from last time was it last mm -hmm. time or the first yeah. time last the finger knitting oh the, knitting. the fi finger knitting yeah. and then this is zero waist necklace which I just put together so and, I just uh, pleated together, just to scrap. Kind of like pleated, pleated together. Pleated back and forth, back yes, and forth, right, over right. and over. Yeah. And, and it makes a beautiful accordion. It yeah, looks great. So let's just put things together. And then I want to also show about the um, things you can do. What I did once with velvet, I was just making a cushion. And I hand stitched then this on the velvet uh, piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. And then in here, in the square, I put again, I stitched on the, the beads, the, uh -huh. the beads, right? Just beads oh yeah, the little beads. little beads, yeah, the little beads, <laughs> right, with the right. stitching. <laughs> with the stitching. So it's a double, double uh, embellishment. Yes, and then more little pearls and beads. Yeah. It's kind of like a hat I did. It's really on, straight on the hat. And all those little beads, it was like, Meditation, meditation for um, many hours mm -hmm. in different colors. And it's just fun to wear it. So um, and then, oh, I forgot what I was aware. It's a bracelet from Deborah. She made it. <laughs> and um, it's beautiful and it's made it out of Deborah. Well, toilet paper <laughs> rolls, of course, which we're going to talk about later. And yes. then embellished with whatever, a page from a, a catalog or a postcard that I can throw away. Yeah. And then twisted uh, fabric, twisted ribbon, um, pipe cleaners, whatever's around. Twisted yeah. mesh bags, mesh bags from the produce, one of my favorite things. So, and then I'm going to show you also embroidering, what you can do. I just got this, you know, just like a hat, a military hat, old mm -hmm. one. And I started, it's not finished yet, I just started hand embroidering this flower around here so you can totally transforms totally it and makes it into makes something, it something far more interesting yeah. yeah yeah and then from my grandma i got a very beautiful um, pillow pillow case yeah. cushion and so this is um, all hand embroidered. embroidered and it's written in german and it says Küssen ist 
keine Sünde means like kissing is not a sin. <laughs> I we, need more, it. we need more kissing uh, now. Know, <laughs> and we just could also take this as inspiration and embroider it on a dress mm -hmm. or on a jacket or anything. You know, just um, being inspired with things you already got from your grandma. Yeah. So then Deborah is showing what she is wearing. Well, uh, we're going to talk about the hat later and how I repair hats and straw with tea bags. Tea bags, used tea bags are a favorite. So that's the hat. The large neck boa piece is made from bamboo paper that were used at a, at a party for popcorn. And I wouldn't let them throw it away, so I took them home and I repurposed them. But even these, if they begin to uh, split or tear, then I repair them with a tea bag. And the underneath little boa is just a little child skirt that I tucked under to make a second collar, another bigger boa. You know, I'm into boas, breastplates, and bibs. And then the coat dress is from Magnolia Pearl, which some of you may know about, which is an incredible company in Texas. And they have the most beautiful aesthetic, and even their building that they're in is exquisite. But so many of their things are repaired and patched and uh, dis um, distressed, you know, with, with uh, paint spots on it and whatever. I don't know how they do a, a line and repeat mm -hmm. this kind of detail, but it's really quite spectacular. Yeah, the repairing. Here. See it all the repairing? And that's, that's a, a regular line. That's not being done loving hands at home. So even that. And the cuffs, again, are toilet paper rolls embellished. Um, these are going to be part of a workshop that's coming up at the Neue Gallery on um, a virtual workshop. So that's basically this for now. And then the next thing we're going to talk about, like repair, right? OK, yeah. We're gonna do the repair, and so I have another denim piece, which I just made. It's like out of a trouser, of course, and I make a, a long skirt out of it. And so what I wanna show is actually how to repair. You can either way do it stitching with the sewing machine, you know, just um, top stitching. Top stitching. Yeah. And I, of course, do it always in the orange because I love orange and it's my signature um color so then the other part which i did here is hand top stitching and then to fix the fabric because it was really weak and falling apart i put some silk on the other side which let me turn it around because it's better to see it which it just took some leftover silk and did the patch right? and i did the patch yes can yes. you wear the skirt inside out so Absolutely. The patch can Absolutely. be seen because the fabric is so beautiful if you want to do it inside outside yeah okay so you so have patch. it with the and the patch on the back which i just fixed everything where it was like really holes. so that repaired the holes in the yes. weak in the weak spots yeah yeah so um these so are the repair and I have more to show with the repair of my, I think this was my first uh, denim jacket and I still have it. And uh, when I bought it, it was this dark color, like a real dark blue color. And in the meantime, it's kind of like falling apart. And here I still have to repair it. And I started already here on the shoulder. And I see that I have to put something underneath to really to, to fix it. So with this, or I glued on a stone to make it just like individual. So will, will you put a jacket. patch of fabric there and then top yes, stitch because the fabric? Yes, because really gone. too big yeah. and uh, I can't fix it just with a stitching. Yeah. And I have really to start weaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which right. it takes like forever. And right. But a patch will be gorgeous. Yeah, on the patch and, and then here I stitched it. The other side is like this one. So, yeah, this is like repairing more and more. You want to get a sweater. <laughs> sweater. So, we have to undress 
this little part. And so Deborah will show this beautiful sweater she was doing. How many hours, Deborah? Oh, I not don't know because I, not I inherited the sweater from my sister maybe 15 years ago, okay. and she got it from a friend five years before that. It's either a Yamamoto or, and so who could give anything Japanese away? And then I've had it all this time, and then of course the mom is starting getting to it. So pick your needles because we decorated it a little bit nice. And uh, there we go. Okay. I'll just put it on over my head. The needles. But sometimes the, the more the thing is torn and ruined, almost like Martina's denim jacket, then the more interesting it will be to repair it because it's not just putting a little patch or just showing a seam, but you're really turning it into something completely, completely unique. Yes. And, and then also when you have something so long, there's history in. Right. You know, I don't know how many times I was wearing this jacket and if this jacket could speak, oh, oh there would be the stories coming out. <laughs> Where it's been, so, what it's seen. Skirt. Oh, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, beautiful. So the shape of this sweater, you could it's, see why I could, why I could never give it away. It's amazing. And it's got gaping holes. It's, so I just started embroidering it to close up the holes with yarn. And you see, even since last year, there are more holes. Just And I, I love it even more with the, the light is a little strange, so we can't quite. That's uh, that's here, we need to be very close on this yeah. um, screen. So, so even here is another hole and the shape is fantastic. It's so really I can amazing. I have another winter project because I have to continue to repair these holes. So, but yes. it it makes it fun. And who knows? Maybe I'll add another color. I started to add uh, the green. a little chartreuse here, mm -hmm. and I felt like that was just enough. But you know, so with sweaters because we seem to have big influx of. But also, you lots. know, even if you have a sweater and it's not. Um, you know, so with, this, with, yeah. with the mud yeah. holes, or the, if you have no um, mud holes in, yeah. you still can do and embroider it. Yeah. You know, so it's you a make, boring sweater. If it's yeah, beige, make yeah. it to your individual um, sweater with the right color you feel like to do it, and just um, labor of love and meditation for right. whatever evening you feel like to do it. Um, and then, so I'm going to just put on a different yeah. hat with this sweater. Yes. And Again, this is kind of what we talked about last week, which is just taking either rag or leftover fabric, cutting it into strips, and just weaving it either over paper cord, and the company I buy paper cord from is Paper Mart. It's the only place I can kind of find it, even though um, Michael's and the craft shops have the paper cord, but it's colored and it's not, it's flatter. But you can also use old electrical cord, anything that you have that's kind of a cylindrical cord, cord and just weave over okay. it, you know, and that's create great. whatever. So you also can use the, the old, um, you know, charger cord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not working anymore, so. Yeah. There are a lot of those hanging <laughs> around. Right. And put it and into a hat or anything else. Yeah. You can just weave around. Yeah. Even wire, like I have the necklaces that I often wear with twisted tape. And if you just take wire and do three rungs of wire and just weave in and out, in and out with the wire, you can still create some kind of a headband. And in this case, it's, it's three of them. And they're all slightly different. But, you know, you just make it up as you go along. Yeah, yeah. And okay. then we got to go to the... To socks? To the socks okay. of mending. And I did one, as you see here, in a different color that we can see it a little bit better. Um, just was fun to, to do it, and the sock is like, my mom was knitting it for me, and um, of course using it um, 
holes come in in the bottom because uh, yeah, they the get wall, worn. when you yeah. walk on, on it, you know, it gets worn and, and so you can fix it. And then if you really have um, socks that are really destroyed almost, then what my mom always do is kind of like, as you see, um, she added to it. Yes. She wove a new bottom and yes. kept the cup. So this was destroyed. She was just taking all the, um, the knitting mm. on this part and she was then at doing the at the foot in a different color, you know, kind of like same If color. they're but really beyond repair, you can cut the bottom off and just use the upper part as a cuff. Yes. You yes. Know? Or you can also. put a couple cuffs together and make a whole sleeve and then you can build on that. So every part has a possibility to repurpose and yeah. turn it into something else. So I repaired these socks that a friend of mine knitted for me 20 years ago. And they only had like a slit in the toe. So to repair it, I just joined the seams and top stitched. But then on this one, they had really big holes. Yeah. So I literally was darning and darning is just like weaving. So you yeah. first have to lay in vertical threads or horizontal threads in this case now and then i go back in and i'm literally weaving these new green threads yeah. so it's your basic under and over you know with the needle and in the old days there used to be those darning tools that was a wooden a wooden thing so i'm using just a cardboard paper towel roll or in this case, a toilet paper roll, That's you know, I just said. so I have something hard so that I don't catch the underside of the yeah. sock. But you can also, which is fun. This is lots of fun. Yeah. You know, if you don't have the right tool, you create yeah. and make the right tools. So a good old fashioned soup spoon, you know, which is almost like the darning ball yeah. because it's a, a rounded surface and it's hard. So anything so you don't catch the other side of the yeah. sock. And you can do that as well, just so you can get some tension in the sock. Yeah. So doing that is very good because, especially if they're, if they're hand-knitted socks, you don't want to give something like this to the garbage. You know, you want to no, use it. You and they're know? warm, they keep and, you warm. Yes, and, and they're cozy. It's warm socks. Yeah. You know? Okay, so that's the darning story. Yes. Where are we going from here? We are going, <laughs> and I want to show you those socks. Those socks are from my grandmother, and I'm not sure if she already got it from her grandmother. I'm not sure about it, but um, when I found it in the box of my mom's um, basement, I was totally fascinated, and I was kind of like, "These are mine." So these are the socks and they are hand knitted with cotton yarn. It's not wool, it's cotton because they had it on normally um, going to the field. The farmers, they were using the so socks uh, going also to the field and every day, you know, there were no stockings in this time. Yeah. So very strong, right? Yeah. It'll be work socks. Yeah, work socks. And then also the beautiful one, part is that is on the inside the floating threads the floating so thread. beautiful thank you Deborah um, and which can be worn inside out inside then so out. then you have more visual texture you see and over the time the color was just fading because it's the cotton mm -hmm. but there's no hole in can you believe on so long time no hole oh. because we treated it like a treasure and I have another pair which is this one, this mm. is fun. And I was always reminded me on Pippi Katalunge, um, which is like in English, um, uh, Pippi Langstrumpf in Deutsch. And in English, what is it, the girl, the strong girl? I don't know anymore. What a shame on me. That um, the little kid, she could lift the horse. And uh, probably you don't have it here. I, I don't know. From, uh, I don't know from fairy tales. I'm terrible. <laughs> anyway. Anybody out there know what she's talking about? Give us a sign. <laughs> Pippi Langstrumpf. Yeah. Um, and so these socks, they were like, you know, here you see they are knitted this way. Yeah. You hold it. It's yeah. this way knitted. Normally you knit it this way. 
because you go around and you, you knitted them up. And so this row as the socks I found when I had to go to a carnival um, event. And I was using the socks because the shoes from my mom, they were too big for me. I was a little small kid. How old were you? I think I was probably 15, 16. Yeah, yeah okay. So. And um, my mom's shoes from the 50s, and I made the combination with the socks. <laughs> and then I put whatever dress, I think a 50s dress I had on. And so then the shoes were fitting, and of course, the point in here, some newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's still like a, Oh my God, what's the date on the newspaper? Oh, should we go, <laughs> should we go on the newspaper? What date is it? Does it have it on? <gasps> Uh, 96. 96, okay. Saturday, 20th of July, 96. 96. Little treasure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I put it back in. Yeah, you know, yeah, save it. Because yeah. you save it here. So this, are, this is the little story from the socks. And, you know, if you make more of these, we, we have more stories and we can give it. Yeah. And, and it's Pass treasure. It's treasure. Makes me happy. So um, now we got to show gonna do another treasure. The repair. Oh, the, the other treasure we do later. Okay. Yeah. So the repair of... So um, my, my passion with um, tea bags. Okay, these yeah. are yellow because they're turmeric and ginger tea. Very healthy mm -hmm. and beautiful. But normally the tea bags with just black tea or I use a lot of kokicha come out just with a little bit of tannic acid so they're just slightly colored mm -hmm. and a little bit dark and i used to repair um i had a chandelier that had uh, silk shades and the shades would deteriorate from the heat and this was the easiest thing because i couldn't sew it so i would just do the tea bags with a little glue so my glue of choice, any white glue will work, and I didn't bring the large jar because I didn't want to carry it, is, as I think a lot of you know, yeah. is um, Aileen's Tacky, because it's very tacky. And this poor straw woven purse, beautiful purse. is beginning to, to tear. Okay. okay, the corners always. The corners, like yeah. And one. I put a string in it so yeah. I could wear it around my neck but also up across the top it's going. So I'm gonna do that first. And all I'm gonna do is paint the glue on. So I'm just holding the glue. And then Which one I'm gonna take a color that's fairly light. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm gonna cut it to size a little, make it a little shorter. And then I'll put some glue on the edges just so that I know I'm out, I'm out to the end. Yeah. Yeah. And it really works because um, tea bags are made from, um, they're one of the strongest papers around. And yet they're so thin that it's almost like working with silk organza or yeah. something. And, um, and with the glue, it becomes things stronger. Yeah. And since it's so thin and translucent, okay, so part of the of the dark weaving so, is not showing, but I can, you know, enhance that if I want, or I can cut that off. And of course the but tea bag paint, paint with a little yeah, right? That's often that you what can I imitate the, right. the dark from the with just a, a felt tip pen. So you see how easy that is, and why should things like this go in the trash yeah. when it was, it's so easy to just repair to them. Repair. And then the hat I was wearing before, which we're going to show, was totally torn apart. And so you can see I did the entire brim here with tea bags. Here, it's everything in tea bags, right? And now it's so strong, it, it's unbelievable. <laughs> And then I even did a tea bag inside. I think I started with the inside before it was really beyond repair. And um, I see here it's beautiful, same tone. You don't even yeah. see anything, yeah. you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, if if the tea bag is, is fairly light, then you don't get the discoloration. Yeah. But I don't even mind the discoloration. It's kind of fun. Yeah. 
And, and so the other thing I do with the tea bags is, for instance, I, they have this so ring that I got in Mexico that had a, a broken stone. And so then I take the tea bag and I roll it and then I just insert it around the edge just to fill in the void. And then the ring is a little bit too big. So rather than tape, which comes off when you wash your hands, a little bit of the tea bag wrapping around to make it smaller. And you can always use another glue that's not water soluble, a crazy glue or, or a gorilla glue uh, or caulking. I use a lot of silicone caulking. And then this ring, I think I just found and had nothing in it. So yesterday I repaired it with a folded tea bag and now I kind of have like a little yellow thing, a little yellow tit on the yeah, end. So you, you created I created a, a stone. A fake stone. Like a, yeah. And I chose to use the turmeric tea bag so that I had a little bit of color in contrast to the silver. And it's so easy to just undo the tea bags. Most of them don't have uh, staples in them anymore. So you just have to undo the threading. And then you just open it up and dump the tea and uh, dust it off a little bit. And you know, I have Tons and tons. And last week you saw that I made an entire boa out of the tea bags. I just glued them all together on a strip of cotton, cord, paper cord, and um, make them into a boa. And then the other thing that's related is I love to save the corn husks from tamales. And then I use them kind of as a backing and a support and kind of a framework on a piece made from old found metal, you know, bottle caps that can still be found in, in Mexico when I'm there. And the corn husks are very strong and you yeah. can do many, many things with them. And you can even save the corn husks off the fresh corn now and dry them and put them together. They may need a surface coating like a, a watered down white glue to keep them from cracking, but they're just a wonderful material to work with. And, and it's easy also to paint on it, it's beautiful. Yeah, to paint it, on it, it right? takes paint and yeah. it take, it, you can even embroider on it and you can use a felt tip pen, of course you can use yeah. felt tip pen on anything. Wonderful. So that's the tea bag story. That's the tea bag. I just saw, thank you Renee for Pippi Longstocking. Oh, <laughs> Pippi, was, okay. Pippi Longstocking was okay. reminding me. You, you know Pippi. it? I've heard of it, you but I don't it. really know it. <laughs> All right, um, and then Somebody wanted to know your website. My yes. website, yes, um, it's Martina Dietrich. Oh, it's the other way around. Okay, you can't see it. It's my name. It's just martinadietrich.com. dot com, um, and then. Oh, so many people yeah. knew it. Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> Thank what you. That, we have to do that. Oh, the dress. Um, I just prepared this dress um, and it will be shown on a fashion show I'm doing. I participate to Brooklyn Fashion Week, Sustainable Fashion Week, and it will be streamed on October 11th. I'm gonna send out um, some information about it to everybody who is uh, watching that you get the information if you're interested in and seeing this kind of like creations or denim, what I made. Um, can we bring it closer so you can see uh, the, the so detail? I'm just showing here, let's bring it on, which I made a little boa out of denim and then a corset which you can use this way, or even if you want to turn it around, there's always another side that you can wear it. And so you just, there's a string, and you can put it this way. Without the stripes. Without. Did you have to add, add the grommets, or were the grommets part of the crotch? Did you add the grommets? Oh, yes, I did. There? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, 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 I and did grommets it. are always fabulous for putting things it's together. It's always good. Lacing um, back and forth. Yeah. Love and it. these are parts from the belt. You know, just put it all the belt parts together. The waistband? The waistband. Yeah. From the belt. You know, yeah, the yeah, waistband. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then, I so said, this one is put it together with other silk fabric, it's silk, and just patchworking it together. Top stitch. Uh, surging? Surging. surging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and easy way. So this will be a part of the fashion show. October 11th. October 11th, it will be streamed. 
before, of course, we're going to record and everything um, because fashion shows are not allowed to have it physically. So we're going to do it virtually. So um, I, I have a dilemma. You have a dilemma? Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah, this dilemma. This dilemma. So I was cleaning out and taking winter clothes out. And I came across a bag of some uh, textiles that I bought in Peru in 69. So that's 51 years ago. And I've looked at them before. And within the last couple of years, the moths have gotten to them. So they are totally destroyed. I threw them in the trash and then I took them out and I said, let me wash them and see if there's anything we to can do. Look at these gorgeous hats, beautiful. totally destroyed. But Holes, holes, huge holes. So Martina and I were saying, what, is there anything we can possibly do to salvage them? Even if yes. it's just pieces to save and use. I mean, they're just fraying. They're just so apart. we thought, you know, we could do, take pieces of fabric, like a piece of knit and maybe insert it and maybe top stitch it, stitch yeah. it and piece it in here and embellish it with the stitching and see if in some way it can be salvaged, even if it becomes an art piece for the wall, because they're just too beautiful to get rid of. So if you have any thoughts or ideas, let me know, because I don't have the heart to throw them away. No, that's too beautiful you know, to throw too beautiful. So. Or I could put them in a box frame and put them on the wall, but I have no more room on the walls. <laughs> So it's a dilemma, so, as these kind of things will be. Do I or don't I? We do. We do. We do. We're going to show it one day. Yeah. Deborah, yeah, we do we're it. Good. We make gonna, it right now, the decision. We're going to salvage we it. Salvage it, and we're going to patch it, whatever will come out. We show it whenever it will be ready. Right. Right. And um, I see just we are a little bit running out of time. Uh -huh. yes. um, are the tea and here we have some questions of course mm -hmm. which is nice are the tea bags used first or not oh yes used first and then saved of course first of all you need to get the tannic acid onto the paper to get the color and of course why would i want to waste the tea bag new rather than uh using it and drinking it first i mean you have to be a tea lover of course Yes, and, and then, someone want to know also what is the glue Deborah is using it again? What, it's called it Aileen's, A-I-L-E-E-N-S, I think, or Aileen's, just tacky glue. I think if you just Google tacky, um, it'll show up. And you can get it in any art supply store, Michael's or uh, Blick or any of those, or even online because I couldn't, I couldn't get it during the, during the lockdown, so I had to order it. It came all the way from Chicago and whatever, but I bought three big bottles, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't run out. Um, I wanted to just mention a friend of mine, Sandra Goldmark, who teaches at Barnard. She just published a book called Let's Fix It, and the title of the book is Fixation. Oh, oh fooey, so who's calling? <laughs> Go away! <laughs> no! <laughs> So at the moment, yeah. it's okay. Okay, just leave it. Okay, so okay. look up, look up fixation. Um, I'm going to show it to you again as soon as this person hangs up, whoever that is. Yeah. I have no idea. It's probably uh, China oh. calling as usual. And, and, okay. So, <laughs> and her name is Sandra Goldmark, and I'm probably going to be doing something with her on an Instagram video or something down the road. But look this up. And um, the story is about your broken stuff and care for what you have. And shit is broken. So we got to save it. Let's, Let's fix it. Fix okay. It. Yes. So again, more so with less. We fix it. As we say, right. then we're going to fix the hats. So um, there's also, it would be fun to have Zoom evenings of stitching. How about okay, this, Deborah? Right. Yeah. Oh, we also we said whoever be. is here in New York, we can also meet in the park. Yeah. And we do the stitching sitting in the park on a yeah. bench or, right. you know, the mending the socks. Right. As long as the weather, it will be nice. Or the crocheting. Or the crocheting. The anything. We can do a um, series of. And here's a question. Um, this is so much fun. Oh, thank you, Carolyn. And. Uh, they are available to be seen again. Yeah. 
um, well, yes, there's the YouTube oh. videos of these all in there on New York Textile Month. Exactly. And we're also going to post them. So all three are available on YouTube. So you have to go to YouTube. And you, you can either put more with less in, you can put New York Textile Month, you can put Martina's name in, you can put my name in. They're available a lot of different ways, all three of them. Yes. Um, website, I already showed my website. Um, yeah, excited to be here from California. Hello to California. And um, now we have so like 10 minutes to show some, I think, or are we gonna, what more are we, what, show? Are we gonna <laughs> show now? Now we are like, oh my gosh, what are you gonna show now? Let's um, see what we have. Show your, your knitted hat that you've been working oh, on. That I'm not finished with well, this one. Yeah, you but know? you're showing it in progress. I, That's the I important show it thing. Um, again for people that were not there last time. So, because it's growing. This is like the, the hat I made from leftover of the stress silk, which I just um, made strips, strips out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's some chiffon. And uh, this was just fun to knit it. Around. And uh, it's still not finished. But so it's growing. Yeah, it's growing. So gorgeous with your hair because the red in the silk print just pops out. And it's... so I don't know, Deborah, what do you think should I make on top? How should I end go, it? I would go a little further and then allow it to just flip. To flip. You know, just do whatever you want or tuck it in like you do on some of the others. But the difference yeah. between what it looks like in fabric or how it looks like on yeah. last week's blouse and it's, when it's cut up into strips and crocheted and, or knitted, it's a whole other story. It's a different design. A whole different out. design. And the colors right. pop differently because it's, it's bits and pieces instead of a real pattern. Yeah. I like to actually also with the yeah. needles in. Yeah, so that's why so, the last time we, we talked about taking twigs yes. and putting the twigs yes. in another to option. keep the uh, another alternative material, a linear so, a linear element in with the yeah. knitted. So that's a fun, fun to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, probably you can also show a little bit more the, the mending the, the because mending. this is so, she made it so beautiful and so, correctly really the one on top the other one isn't it amazing it's like but it's, it's very fun down. to do you need your glasses so you can oh, yeah, do it definitely also it's better with the blunt needle or the back of the needle so that you don't get the needle uh piercing the thread or the yarn so it's much easier with the back of the needle to weave it i don't have my glasses on but I have it right here. Like you have it. Right my hair uh, it's always fun when you put on something. <laughs> and the hair takes off. And the yes. Um, do we have more? I thought I, I thought I brought another hat, but now I can't remember. Where, where, Did you bring, bring another hat? No, I don't know. Can you wear this as a hat? Well, originally I was going to do that. Oh, as a hat. yes. Show this one as a hat because. Then we have the variation <laughs> of the. <laughs> oh, you got stuck in? Yeah. Okay. okay, so this one. Well, this again, it's just a child it. skirt, and I often wear it as a skirt. Right. But often here, proof of the with, skirt. Yeah, the zipper with the zipper, with the zipper. And then I'll often turn these into hats because they're they're so much fun, and they're so available. Usually, you could find yeah. them in a here. A okay, pin. yes, straight pin is easier. I had that regular. And then, and then you just let it flow or, you know, so you can pin it again so it stays, or if you're doing a photo shoot, you just keep letting it do its thing and you just let it flop around. Yeah. And they're really comfortable because the waistband is it's like it's totally head. perfect okay. as the headband. Yeah. And then if you need to, you could always stuff it with some tissue paper, or if you happen to or have the, a the, sock. The socks, the mended socks, you know, mm -hmm. they're always good to have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make more volume, right? Make to, more volume, yes. it's about volume. We and love the volume. Structure mm -hmm. and 
Oh, nice. Yeah, and I love the chartreuse on the hair band, so I'm going to tuck this up a little bit. All right. So how's that for starters? I mean, oh, this is take off good. from there. Yes. And we're ready to go, yes? We're ready to go to... To lunch? To lunch? Right now, to lunch, yes. yes. Or go out to the Magnum Museum in... Uh, in uh, Jersey City, is that where yeah. we're going? On Saturday to see the uh, graduate students work. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, everything's a hat. A lampshade, a vase, a hat. And then a hat can be a lampshade, which I've often done. And because they're all vessels, it just depends what you want them to contain, whether it's flowers, head, or a bulb. I think that's pretty nifty because I love the fabric on this little skirt. Oh, and here's someone who's also, uh, Natalia. Oh, yeah, 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 hello. love from Argentina, yes. Hello. Yes, we miss you. Hurry back. We, uh, here also there's a suggestion about the, the hats we're gonna repair. Needle felt. Needle ah, felt. I don't know how to do it, but it's a good idea, yeah. Needle felt. Because um, I was going to maybe use just regular felt to back it up because it would be wool and be easy to, um, to stitch. Okay, Judy yeah. Schwartz, best to use wool to repair the wool sweater or can you mix other materials? Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is, this the magenta on here is wool, but I think it's a blend. It just happens to be yeah. what I had left over, you know, bits and pieces. I don't buy yarn, so whatever I have. Um, it, it's all about, to me, more the color and the yeah. texture, whether... And then here's also a question about, can you still wash it? Of course, because this kind of like yeah. art piece is you wash by hand. By hand, very gently. Very gently. And then you lock and it on a towel. Yeah. yeah. So that you, you it's don't not stretch stretching it out. out. Right. Right. Yeah. You have it. Um, cotton clothing. Oh, can you also use tea bags washable. to repair washable cotton clothing? Well, mm -hmm. you can if you use the permanent glue. The, the, this is water soluble, but if you use crazy glue or um, uh, gorilla glue, which for somehow everybody seems to be out of it, maybe the trucks aren't delivering, but then those are not water soluble. But again, you know, I wouldn't put it in a wash machine. I would, I would hand wash it and maybe not big areas, but little, little areas that need to be repaired. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, Anya. Anya, hello. Great to see you, Anya. I mean, great to hear from you. Picking on toilet paper roll and paints. For example, you have a station for your pinch. Oh. So. So the whole idea is really this is an active place. So you want to just have a good time. I mean, this. I mean, it's serious in the way that we're saving the planet and we're serious in the way that you're creating your own unique style. So the whole thing is about creating your own trends and creating your own individual style and making your own individual works. Yes, a lot of these things can be done in volume and can be, be sold. All of Martina's things are, are one of a kind and she sells them and they're all made from zero waste. And the things that we all have at home that we can make for ourselves, therefore we, we can shop less. Yeah. And that's the whole idea. Conscious shopping. Shop for what you really need, what's essential. Absolutely. Um, Hi, Haris. Greetings. Hope everything's hello. wonderful in New Hampshire. Is it getting cold mm -hmm. up there? And from hello, Prague. From Prague. Hello. And from Mexico. Yay. <sighs> okay, uh, so unfortunately, right. this is the third of our third. Yes. And maybe we'll do it again next year, or maybe we'll find another another venue or another or situation to continue. Or we'll meet in the park. We meet in the park, definitely. With a bottle of wine. <laughs> and we can figure out something for the next uh, thing. So we are creative. You know, in the meantime, we are creating more, yeah. and um, then we can show more with less. Right. So, so save the planet, sustainability, let's do everything we can. And um, there are many other sites and things doing mending. And uh, I'm going to post something on October 1st. I'm doing on Glorious Broad's um, 
frugality is fun, talking about food and fashion. And Martine is doing the fashion show October 11th for yes. New York Brooklyn Fashion Week. So Just stay tuned. Stay and tuned that we have uh, new things to come up with. Yeah. And don't forget to print out the dictionary, which is on yes. Martina's website. This so one, the dictionary, easy to make it. It's always fold it and sew it. Fold it and stitch it, hand stitch it together. Mm -hmm. Easy to do it, really easy. Um, whatever color of thread you, you have available, just put it together. And uh, keep the reminder, yep. labor of love, yes. to uh, be creative and recreate to uniqueness. Yeah. This is what we are saying You know, create here. your own trends. Be an individual. My favorite quote by Maya Angelou, uh, like, you've heard me say it the other two times. Stop trying to be normal because then you'll never find how really unique you are. This Who wants true. to be normal in this world? Boring. Normal is boring. It's boring. Boring. Be authentic. Yeah. Be you, and be true to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like right. Oscar Wilde says, "Be yourself." Everyone else is taken. <laughs> On that note, we'll say adieu. Until next time. All right. I think. Oh, Mary way, Jane. Okay. You seem not more. a question. So it okay. Mary Jane. Okay, she's the one from Glorious Broads, and we're going to be doing Frugality is Fun on October 1st. Right. So I think we are done. good. Mm -hmm. And um, so we just want to say thank you, everybody. And um, here we are. Hi, Ragna. Ragna. Oh, wait a second. Unmute. Yes, to unmute. Unmute. Ragna, we don't. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your. I was muted. But thank you so much, Deborah and Martina, for your contribution to New York Textile Month this year. It has been so amazing to have you. And Absolutely. hopefully, you will start to organize something to participate in a year. Yes. So yes. You yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll see you on Saturday. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.